Dad died, and you left us. When I was here, I wanted to be there. Primordial instincts, without feeling, without passion, without judgment. Brutal desire. He's like an animal. There's even something subhuman about him. There's a conflict in every human heart between good and evil. The great war is a spiritual war. This is the Godfather of Cinema, and thanks for joining me for my analysis of director Francis Ford Coppola's 1979 Vietnam War film Apocalypse Now and Eli Kazan's 1951 American drama A Streetcar Named Desire. When I was there, all I could think of was getting back into the jungle. Apocalypse Now is set in the Vietnam War in 1968 and opens in a small hotel room in Saigon. The room's hellish state is Willard's state of mind because he has not had a mission in a whole week. He could have remained with his wife in America after his first tour. However, he detests lies, conflict, and confusion as the only thing he could think about with her was the savage jungle where he belonged. When I was here, I wanted to be there. And where there are no lies, nor is there conflict or confusion of any kind. And this is why Willard breaks off contact with the world and his wife by divorcing her to fully commit himself to the war and his job as an assassin for the CIA. Absolutely goddamn right. He cannot be committed to his wife and his mission at the same time. It is either her or the mission, so he chooses the mission, going on to kill six operatives close enough to them that he can feel their last breaths on his face and kills a girl on a sampling boat on the Nung River in Vietnam instead of trying to save her. Colonel Kurtz, like Willard after him, killed four Vietnamese double agents because he detests the stench of lies since the double agents were working both sides. Which is impossible as the photojournalist tells Willard you cannot love someone and hate them at the same time. Paralyzed force. As Kurtz was once confused when he was an officer in the special forces in Korea, when he and a group were sent into a camp to inoculate children for polio, when he was called back to the camp and found the arms of those same children in a pile, when his eyes were opened by this incident and the pointlessness of his conflicting roles as a humanitarian and a killer. Between the rational and the irrational. That each canceled out the other like loving someone and hating Paralyzed them at the same voice. time and like Willard divorcing his wife and life and America to fully commit himself to his job as a CIA assassin in Vietnam. Kurtz divorces his commanders at Nha Trang and reverts to his true nature in order to fight an enemy without more restraints or shame like Stella in A Streetcar Named Desire who is not at all ashamed about abandoning Belle Reeve, her sister Blanche and their mother who was dying. Dad died and you left us. Stella's desire for Stanley Kowalski pulls her down to a primitive level and a dilapidated apartment in New Orleans called Elysian Fields. Despite her genteel upbringing, Stella is not ashamed about marrying Stanley. To the contrary, she is proud to point him out to Blanche when he starts that brawl at the bowling alley. Isn't he wonderful looking? Stella is not ashamed of being turned on by him smashing all of those light bulbs in their apartment on their wedding night. When he hits Stella during an argument and she leaves him, Stella! she goes back to him and even defends him like a mother in denial to Blanche who wants her to leave him. In Tennessee Williams' script, Stanley tosses Stella a package of meat for dinner. Meet because it and desire are what pulled her down to Elysian Fields. For Stanley Kowalski is not ashamed about being as Blanche calls him an animal. 
he beats Stella, then cries out for her the next minute to come back to him, and she does. He gets mad at her and throws a radio out of the window. He is blunt when he tells Blanche that he refuses to compliment women like her, and this is why Blanche dislikes Stanley because he is not gullible or a hypocrite. He looks okay. Captain Willard is not a hypocrite either, nor can he understand why his commanders at Natrang would send a killer like himself to track down and terminate another killer like himself for killing four Vietnamese double agents. Nor can Willard understand why an American army chaplain would hold a holy communion over the dead body of a VC in that coastal village or why Lieutenant Colonel Kilgore that gasoline smell. would offer his canteen of water to a dying VC. Nor can Willard understand the actions of the captain of the Sampin boat taking him to Kurtz's stronghold in Cambodia. Till we reach your destination, Captain, you just on for the ride. Chief stops another boat and shoots up the family on it. <laughs> then tries to bring the dying girl aboard to take her to a medic. Bring her on board. Willard sees this hypocrisy and shoots the girl to put her out of her misery. He told Chief not to stop the boat unless he was going to go all the way. Absolutely goddamn right. By killing everyone on that boat, including the girl he tried to save. Chief had a family killed and thought that a band-aid would make it all okay. It wouldn't because you can't love someone and hate them at the same time. Like the United States government and Kurtz's commanders at Na Trang, the special forces trained him to be a killer and made him a hypocrite because he was also a good man, liberal thinker, and humanitarian. We are here to help you. They sent him with a group of killers like him to a camp in Korea to inoculate children in the camp for polio. This old man came running after us. After they left, the enemy entered that camp and cut off all those children's arms. This incident opens Kurtz's eyes to the truth. The genius of that. And he deserts the special forces to go live among the Mantagnards in the jungle in Cambodia, where he takes it upon himself to execute four Vietnamese double agents who were hypocrites, as he was a hypocrite in being both killer and humanitarian for the special forces. In Apocalypse Now, the Nung River is the main circuit cable representing the conflict between good and evil in the soul of man, which is why Kurtz believes and explains to Willard that you must utilize men's primordial instincts to either love somebody or you hate them in order to get them to kill without the interference of moral judgments that will confuse and hinder them. Ah! Soldiers must be trained to be inhumane in order to free their souls from conflict and the Nung River. Otherwise, all you end up being is a hypocrite. Like Blanche Dubois in A Streetcar Named Desire who makes an impression that she is a class above everyone else he looks okay. At Elysian Fields by reminding Stella that she abandoned her and their dying mother in Belle Reve to be with Stanley Kowalski in Elysian Fields. Blanche puts Stella down by referring to Stanley as a Pollock and an animal. Just brutal desire. <laughs> She even puts down Elysian Fields in comparison to Belle Reeve. Don't you think your superior attitude's a little out of place? And when Stanley offers her some of his whiskey, she informs him that she rarely touches whiskey. The stench of lies. Stanley has a friend and co-worker who is also a mama's boy by the name of Mitch. He has a crush on Blanche. However, she informs him that she is a Virgo or a virgin and that her name stands for white in French. He is innocent and naive and takes her for a lady. He reminds her of that boy. Tarantula was the name of it. That's why I brought my victims. She fell in love with at that high school as Stella has allowed her desire for 
Stanley to bring her to Elysian, Blanche allowed her desire for that 17-year-old boy to bring her to Elysian. And even though Blanche is still beautiful, Stanley Kowalski knows that she is hiding something under all of her fake furs, fake jewelry, and superior airs. Ha ha! which she uses to deceive Mitch with. She lied to him about her real age because men expect women over 30 years old to put out easy and she wants him to marry her and take her out of Elysian. Marry me, Mitch. Through trusted sources, Stanley learns about Blanche's checkered past, her fling with a 17-year-old boy in Laurel, and how she turned tricks at a hotel called the Flamingo. Sure that was the name of it. She had been kicked out of Laurel, but Desire follows her in that streetcar to New Orleans. When a paper boy shows up at the door, she makes him light her cigarette, but even so, after giving him a sweet kiss on the mouth, she lets him go. There's a conflict in every human heart between good and evil. In Apocalypse Now, the Nung River is the moral war and the conflict between good and evil in the soul of man. As Kurtz explains to Willard in saying that to free oneself from the struggle between good and evil, you must utilize men's primordial instincts to get them to kill without judging their actions as either good or evil. Without judgment. The side that freed its soldiers from more judgments will win the war, but the side that failed to free its soldiers of more judgments will lose the war. Our great war is a spiritual war. From a lieutenant colonel ordering his soldiers to surf the beach of an LZ under heavy enemy fire to playboy bunnies throwing a show for paratroopers, marines and soldiers at an outpost while Charlie the Viet Cong, the enemy, is squatting in the bush. Absolutely goddamn right. To a soldier taking time out to go mango picking in a war zone. I'm a saucier to a bridge under construction and heavy enemy fire at an outpost of stranded soldiers who's the commanding officer here fighting for their lives and not much else ain't you willard now understands why kurtz got off the boat and quit the whole fucking program for like kurtz he has never had any trouble killing other men not even by hand many so close that they could blow their last breath in his face even so he cannot remember any of their faces nor does he lose any sleep over shooting the girl on the sampin boat to put her out of her misery ah! because he could not relate to her nor any of those he killed on behalf of the CIA because they were not like him. However, looking at Curtis's picture, studying his dossier, and taking the same snaking trail up the Nung River straight to the man's heart and stronghold in the Cambodian jungle like a main circuit cable changes everything for Willard. When he gets off that boat and sees the flesh and blood man he had been reading about for weeks, an American soldier like himself and a human being unlike those six faceless and nameless people he killed for the CIA. Killing Kurtz, a ritual sacrifice like a water buffalo restores Willard back to his own humanity and God because killing Kurtz is hard and this is what he lost as an assassin for the CIA. The ability to feel anything towards those he killed. It had become easy for him. Which takes us back to the question of whether it is possible to love and hate someone at the same time or exclusively or whether a person can only be capable of either good or evil but not both at the same time. Madame Soralt tells Willard at the French outpost the same thing she had told her dying husband that he was not an animal or a god but both. He was an animal and a god and to be a man meant exercising restraint which brings us back to Stella and a streetcar named Desire. If it is self-discipline that separates humans from beasts not exercising restraint over himself has turned Stanley Kowalski 
into a beast like Captain Willard and Colonel Kurtz, which is how he seduces Stella to give up her dignity, class, and self-respect by abandoning her sister and dying mother at Belle Reve to be with him in Elysian Fields. Unlike her sister Blanche, who refuses to walk away from Belle Reve and her dying relatives easily, she fights to keep Belle Reve. Our great war is a spiritual war. However, her lust for a 17-year-old boy and a hotel in-law called the Flamingo Tarantula was the name of it causes her to lose Belle Reeve and pulls her down to Elysian Fields. But unlike Stella, Blanche remembers the class and beauty of Belle Reeve and time when she was once a lady of class, respect, and dignity. Scandal chases her out of town, but desire and the past follows her to Elysian Fields, where she is tempted by strong whiskey, a paper boy, and forbidden love. Even so, she refuses to give up like Stella and Colonel Kurtz, but Stanley and Desire are determined to destroy her because she is a threat to Stanley's control over Stella. He tells Mitch about Blanche's past and Mitch breaks off their relationship at last. Without him, there is no hope for Blanche and she will never escape her past. <laughs> Desire or Elysian. Stanley gives her a one-way ticket back to Laurel and forces himself on her as an assassin for the CIA. Ah! Captain Willard has killed many men close enough to feel their last breath on his face and yet it takes killing a man he knows, Colonel Walter E. Kurtz, to give him back his humanity. Blanche's downfall is a shock to Stella that gives her back her dignity and memory of the woman she used to be before she met Stanley and left Belle Reeve. Her desire for him will always be with her, but Stella Ella knows that she now has the strength to resist him. Come on, honey. You touch me. Don't you ever touch me again. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? This concludes my analysis of directors Francis Ford Coppola's 1979 Vietnam War film Apocalypse Now and Eli Kazan's 1951 American drama A Streetcar Named Desire. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you would leave a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to The Godfather of Cinema and hit the bell to receive a notification when I release my next video. I will see you soon.